The Tonight Show host, Jimmy Fallon, owns one. Eminem bought one. Paris Hilton is an NFT influencer. And reportedly so is musician Snoop Dogg under the moniker Cosmo de Medici. Reese Witherspoon even says we'll all need one in the future for some type of digital avatar. Serena Williams, Ozzy Osbourne and Travis Barker are all using NFTs for their profile pictures on Twitter and talking about them. Even YouTube influencers are using or launching their own NFT projects. So are we still early for NFTs or non-fungible tokens or have you missed out? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the Creator Economy Show. In this video, I'm going to explain why we're still very early for NFTs and what you should do if you feel like you're missing out. Hope you enjoy the content in this video. If you do, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now remember, while I'm about to explain why we're still early for NFTs, they are incredibly risky. Many of them are scams and will go to zero. So I'm not a financial advisor and this is for informational purposes. You gotta do your own research. The first reason why we're still incredibly early for NFTs is most blue chip NFTs are still brand new or relatively brand new. Don't let the news, the media or recency bias fool you. And this comes from somebody who's an ex-journalist. The concept of a non-fungible token or a digital non-fungible token is relatively new. The CryptoKitties and the CryptoPunks were some of the first NFTs to launch and they minted back in late 2017, which isn't too long ago. That might seem like a while ago, but some of the more media friendly NFTs like Bored Ape Yacht Club only minted or launched in 2021. Other examples of future blue chip NFTs also launched in 2021. I'm talking about the likes of World of Women and Cool Cats and Doodles. A few bit of context, Bitcoin minted back in 2009 and Ethereum in 2015. So NFTs are still a relatively new asset class in Web 3.0 that creators and project owners are still figuring out, let alone buyers and casual retail investors. The NFT space is also packed full of derivatives and knockoffs. If you spend any time on OpenSea, you'll quickly come across projects that are a type of ape. Does the space really need more apes? I don't think so. In other words, tomorrow's blue chip NFTs are still being dreamed up, let alone launched. And because NFTs have many potential use cases, chances are the future blue chip NFTs won't be JPEGs of animals. So no, that's the first reason why you haven't missed out. The second reason why we're still early for NFTs is because of OpenSea. OpenSea is the premier NFT marketplace. It launched in December 2017. In July of 2021, it was valued at $1.5 million. Cut to January 2022, it raised 300 million in additional funding and was valued at an eye-watering 13.3 billion. But OpenSea is experiencing many of the growing pains uh, popular with startups or that startups experience when they're going through uh, moments of high growth. If you spend any time using OpenSea during big mints, you'll find that it will go offline at some point and it can be slow and expensive to use thanks to gas fees. Not all of that is OpenSea's fault, but it does provide some uh, hurdles which wannabe NFT buyers have to overcome. OpenSea is also facing new competition which could potentially make it much easier for people to get into the NFT space. Looks Rare is an NFT marketplace that launched in December 2021, they airdropped Luxware tokens into the wallets of holders in a way to drive up popularity and awareness of this NFT marketplace. In 2022, OpenSea is also going to face competition from Coinbase. Now, OpenSea claims approximately 1 million users. For context, Coinbase claims 72 million users, and it says over 1 million of these people have signed up for its NFT marketplace waitlist. Chances are it's going to become much easier to buy an NFT on Coinbase, whatever you think of Coinbase or their fees. So if you want to buy an NFT on OpenSea, here are the steps you've got to go through. You've got to set up an account on a cryptocurrency exchange like Coinbase or Binance or Kraken. Buy some Ethereum, set up your MetaMask or software wallet, transfer Ethereum to it, connect it to OpenSea, sign the transaction, do your own research, find an NFT that you want to buy, and then make sure you secure it successfully. And then you're also responsible for keeping uh, your seed phrase for your MetaMask wallet safe. Now, if you bought a few NFTs, it doesn't take long to do all of those steps, but I think people who are new to, or who are in NFTs for a while, forget about how off-putting that can be for most people. It's a lot of steps to go through and you gotta do all of that in reverse if you wanna take your NFT and take a profit back to real world currency. On the other hand, if you wanna buy cryptocurrency with Coinbase, you can do it relatively easy. 
Just fire up the App Store, download the Coinbase app, connect your credit or debit card, and you can buy Bitcoin or Ethereum by pressing the button. Don't actually recommend doing this because it's quite an expensive way to buy crypto. You're going to face those Coinbase fees. But it's fair to say that Coinbase will probably simplify how easy it is for people to buy projects. And hopefully they're going to do a bit more vetting than uh, exchanges like OpenSea. So when you spend any time in OpenSea, you can find scams, knockoffs, and projects that are going to zero. So hopefully Coinbase will be safer to use than OpenSea for casual investors who don't have hours to spend on Twitter and in NFT discords. The third reason why we're still early for NFTs is search volume is rising. So I've spent uh, years building content publishing websites. My main content publishing website is Become a Writer Today, where I publish articles about the craft of writing. I've also set up content publishing websites in other niches or niches, as you say, in the United States, like health and fitness, technology and food and drinks. So I spent a lot of time looking at Google Trends data and search volume data to see the types of topics people are searching for. When I started learning more about NFTs, I dug into Google Trends data to see what interest in the topic was like. I was surprised by what I found. When I analyzed the term NFTs, I was surprised to see Singapore and China topping the list over the United States, especially since China's 2021 crypto ban. I dug a little bit deeper and found a similar data set for the term NFT with an S, what a difference a letter can make, and I found that the US was number two after New Zealand. But whatever search term you analyze, you can see that interest in the topic or term NFTs has risen exponentially over the past 12 to 18 months. The next reason why we're still early for NFTs is celebrities are buying NFTs or getting into the space. So over the past few years, celebrities like Eminem and Tonight Show host Jimmy Fallon have paid six figures for NFTs. Jimmy Fallon even invited NFT influencer Paris Hilton onto his show to talk about what NFTs are and to compare their bored ape purchases. If you spend any time on Twitter, you'll find some of these celebs are using their NFTs as their digital avatars. Reese Witherspoon is somebody I'd recommend that you follow who talks about how to use digital avatars. Now, most people can't afford to pick up a bored ape to use for their digital, digital avatar, but the fact that celebrities are buying NFTs does raise an awareness about what NFTs are. It gets more people to feel like they're potentially missing out or wondering if they should get an NFT and what they should do. All of this helps NFTs gain more mainstream attention and also raise more interest from people who may potentially buy them. The next reason why we're still early for NFTs is big brands are betting big on the metaverse. Now the metaverse is a weird, loose or shaky concept describing how we potentially interact with each other in 3D online environments. Personally, the metaverse mockups that I've seen or videos that I've seen look like a bad 1995 video game or 1998 video game and no, not Half-Life. But if the metaverse is realized in its current form, we'll use cryptocurrency to buy goods and services and NFTs will represent a type of digital property within the metaverse. You'll even potentially be able to go and see your friend's collection of NFTs uh, using virtual reality technology. Facebook or Facebook now known as Meta has invested over 10 million to date in its plans for the metaverse and Microsoft's January 2022 purchase of gaming company Activision for 68.7 billion represents how bullish it is about gaming and blockchain technology. Even Apple may be getting in on the action because in a first quarter 2022 conference call, CEO Tim Cook said, right now we have over 14,000 augmented reality kits in the app store, which provide incredible AR experiences for millions of people today. And so we see a lot of potential in the space and are investing accordingly. Now, future blue chip NFTs could come from tech companies. Late 2021 also saw traditional brands dipping their toe into the space with Adidas launching its own NFT project. Adidas partnered up with NFT influencers and Board Ape Yacht Club and owners of this NFT get exclusive clothing and trainers. So even though you may question what these big tech companies are doing uh, with the metaverse and NFTs, do you really want to bet against them getting it wrong because they've invested so much time, money and creative energy into the space. So how can you get into NFTs early? Well, if you haven't bought an NFT yet, don't worry. In fact, you don't even need to rush out and buy one. You haven't missed out. I would recommend you start by following a few credible NFT influencers on Twitter. You could follow Gary Vaynerchuk, Cosmo de Medici, who's the moniker that Snoop Dogg reportedly tweets under about NFTs, or even Reese Witherspoon. When they share information about an NFT project, don't feel the need to ape in either. Instead, just follow the project on Twitter and join its Discord group. Read the roadmap and interact with other followers or members of the project so you can learn more about it and its many use cases. 
If you are uh, keen on buying an NFT, you can also use websites like WGMI or nextdrop.is to track what the market is buying and launching next. And I actually have a video on this channel where I go into some of the NFT websites and tools that you can use. Now you can either mint or buy a credible NFT on the secondary market near the floor price. Just remember to use funds that you're willing to lose because many NFTs are incredibly risky. If you still want to buy an NFT but you don't have much funds because of the cost of using the Ethereum blockchain, consider picking up a more affordable one on Solana Art. Even if the NFT purchase or your purchase doesn't take off, consider it as part of an educational experience for navigating the NFT market and Web 3.0. And if you catch yourself looking at Board Ape Yacht Club or CryptoPunks and thinking, oh God, I missed out, remember tomorrow's NFTs or blue chip NFTs are still being dreamed up and they'll probably be more encompassing than simple JPEGs, memes or GIFs. You can also use your skills to get involved in the NFT space. You could help create the next project by contributing code through learning languages like Solidity. You could join the community on Discord and become a community manager. Some creators are also looking for writers to uh, build up a backstory or lore about their projects. Or you can also help an NFT project with marketing online. One of my favorite examples is from late 2021. Brittany Pierre earned over $109,000 by selling NFTs of her photography. And she also then flipped some NFTs for a profit. So in short, the NFT space is still young, it's still developing, but it's still incredibly risky. So I can't emphasize how important it is to do your own research. But yes, we're still early. I hope you enjoyed the content in this video about NFTs still being early. If you do hit thumbs up and if you wanna get more videos like this or about Web3.0, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And finally, if you did enjoy this video, then I think you'll like this one next.